Hello there, my name is Pavos Termo, and now we'll unveil the top news of recent days. In the temporarily occupied territories, the Russians began to threaten the seizure of unlicensed television equipment to residents who refused to connect to Ruski Mir satellite television. This was reported by the Center of National Resistance. As noted, the occupiers continue to plant their television in order to increase the effectiveness of their propaganda. The Kremlin's machine of lies works thanks to information isolation, when there is no alternative to the Russian distorted reality. Therefore, the occupiers are actively distributing television equipment for the Russian Mirmia satellite television, which includes about 20 Kremlin channels. However, according to the Central Intelligence Agency, the local population is no hurry to take this equipment because they do not want to fall into the enemy's propaganda net. Earlier, it became known that the residents of the occupied communities of the Kherson region are massively connected to the Russian satellite television called Russian World, or Ruski Mir in Russian, in order to block the channels of access of information about the real situation at the front line in Ukraine and in the world. According to the main directorate of Ukrainian intelligence, as of February 2024, the Russians have installed more than 18,000 relevant devices. Mayor of Melitopol Ivan Fedorov reported that the occupiers announced and launched 39 Russian world satellite television channels in some areas of the temporarily occupied parts of Zaporizhia and Kherson regions. In the temporarily occupied territories, special commissions of the occupation administrations, accompanied by the Russian police, conduct raids and seize satellite television equipment. In return, the occupiers provide free receivers, satellite dishes and converters for broadcasting Russian propaganda channels. I would like to conclude this topic with this, but I will say one more thing, so anyone will not say that they were not warned. Monday will be the first day of the new academic year in many schools in Russia, and there will be celebrations accordingly. If there will be an explosion somewhere, it is not the Ukrainian rocket or drone, it was a Kremlin provocation that arranged it to blame its enemies. Previously they were Chechens, now they are Ukrainians, and it is their propaganda that will convince everyone of this. Nothing about Ukraine without Ukraine. It was the slogan that became the reason why the USA and China did not reach an agreement on the issue of a specific plan for a diplomatic solution of Russia's war against Ukraine. US National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan said, Washington will continue to adhere to the principle of nothing about Ukraine without Ukraine. According to Sullivan, during the last three days, the American and Chinese sides had the opportunity to exchange views on the war. According to him, the parties have not reached any specific plan regarding diplomacy. So, in the end, it is up to Ukraine to decide how it wants to continue the diplomatic and negotiation process, Sullivan added. Let me remind you that Jake Sullivan held talks on bilateral relations with the Foreign Affairs Commission of the Central Committee of the Communist Party of China, Wang Yi. In particular, the diplomats discussed the holding of new negotiations between the heads of their states, Joe Biden and Xi Jinping, and also agreed on contacts at the military level in due course time. Then also told Sullivan that the US should stop arming Taiwan and support peaceful re reunification of China, adding that the island's independence is the biggest risk to peace and stability in the Taiwan Strait. Biden's advisor visit to China was particularly aimed at reducing tensions between Washington and Beijing. The meetings covered a number of areas in which the two countries have differences, including trade, Middle East and Ukraine and China's territorial claims from Taiwan to the South China Sea. Biden and Xi Jinping last spoke by phone in April this year, and their first conversation since the summit in San Francisco in the fall of 2023. And today in the UETV studio we have Seat Rizvanovich, owner of the YouTube channel World Talk Defense. Greetings, Mr. Rizvanovich. Greetings, nice to be here. Thanks. It is a pleasure to have you at our studio. So the first question will be about probably Belarusian accumulation of troops on the border with Ukraine. Lukashenko tries to uh, like promote power to translate it, but is there a real danger to it? Well, Lukashenko is uh, trying to do more, I think, by my opinion. He is trying to make uh, some uh, leverage on the Ukrainian offensive in the Kursk region. He is trying to put pressure, uh, pressure on the Ukrainian armed forces uh, by build-up of troops uh, on the border, by creating 
uh, momentum of uh, or creating uh, appearance that uh, he can uh, attack Ukraine on uh, conduct an invasion from uh, Belarus, Belarus, Belarus. Uh, but I think that is not uh, uh, not a very possible scen scenario uh, right now for several reasons. Uh, one of them is that uh, Lukashenko is, I think, smarter than uh, that uh, and to involve his country in a direct invasion on uh, Ukraine. Uh, we can see that in the almost past three years, he uh, he didn't uh, do that. Uh, even he have very close relations with uh, Russia. They have defensive pact and uh, everything. But he he was uh, very careful not to involve uh, Belarus directly in the war in uh, Ukraine. And I don't think that he is uh, going to do that. Especially that uh, the West have. Uh, uh, so many leverage uh, on uh, him. They have uh, uh, so many, so many tools to apply pressure, like more sanctions that are not applied on uh, Belarus, and th they are keeping uh, uh, him uh, on a on a on a tight lease uh, this way. Uh, so I don't think that he is uh, going to do that. Uh, this is just uh, a move by him, uh, probably. Uh, instrumented by Putin uh, to do that, to apply another pressure on Ukrainian armed forces. But I think that the invasion from uh, Belarus is uh, very less likely. We see that uh, Russian armed forces cannot stop, uh, for at least now, a deeper incursion into Kursk region. Probably Belarusian armed forces with uh, almost zero battle experience, the last one was in Afghanistan during the times of the Soviet Union, they are worried about possible Ukrainian incursion if they attack from their side. And returning to the Kursk region, that operation and Russia's response, everyone in the West was scared of escalation. They said that Russia will hit you with a hundred missiles, but we are having those hundreds of missiles each month. There was indeed uh, a strike of uh, four days, a streak of massive uh, drone and missile strikes. We lost one F-16, it was confirmed. How do you see the events unfolding with F-16 Western help and their relentless refusal to allow us to hit Russia with those weapons? Well, that story about escalation, it's uh, uh, not a strange, uh, but not a very relevant story. Uh, relevant argument uh, as you said uh, russians are, are hitting ukraine for with everything that they have and they are doing this for almost three years i don't know uh, what kind of escalation uh, will that be if uh, russia have uh, 700,000 soldiers in ukraine and and if they are attacking as you said with a thousand missiles uh, but not maybe daily, but weekly. And uh, what kind of escalation? Are we talking about uh, nuclear attack or, or what? Because uh, this is the escalation and I don't see any other escalation because Russia is doing everything that it can to destroy Ukraine. And uh, I think that uh, this uh, move by the uh, General Sirsky, Sirsky in uh, Kursk is a brilliant uh, move. This is something that uh, was done uh, uh, before. Uh, is as a matter of fact, this is uh, something that was done in uh, by Russia recently in uh, Kharkiv, in Kharkiv region, but uh, they didn't succeed there. They are stopped there, and the Ukrainians uh, done the very same thing. Uh, what is the point of this? Because uh, Ukraine and Russia are stuck in some form of attrition warfare for the last uh, year and a half, uh, for instance. And uh, we can see that neither side can make some significant significant uh, breakthrough, some uh, uh, some some effort to to claim more uh, territory. So Sirsky has done something uh, that uh, any commander uh, will do. He has find a weak spot. He has find a soft belly of the Russian armed forces, and his strike there is uh, legitimate. It's th this is the legitimate uh, tools. This is uh, self defense by UN Charter. You are attacking the territory from uh, where the attack is coming from, from on your uh, country. 
And uh, with this uh, move, uh, Sirski has done uh, big things. He has uh, uh, moved the attention of the Western uh, media on Ukraine. Uh, again, he has shown that uh, Ukrainian armed forces uh, can, uh, can be innovative uh, again in their tactics than even uh, when uh, many people thought that there is nothing nothing else that uh, they can do. He has shown them that he can do that. He has uh, diverted uh, Russian resources, uh, Russian uh, logistics, and uh, uh, we can say that uh, one of the one of the reasons, uh, and I think that Sirsky has uh, admitted that that was one of the reasons to divert uh, more Russian troops from the eastern battlefield, uh, from Donetsk, especially where the things are hard, like for example in Pokrovsk. Uh, that didn't happen, as uh, we can see. But uh, nevertheless, uh, this is a brilliant uh, move, and this move is uh, is creating not just military problems for Russia, but huge uh, politically problems for Putin, because now the third year in his failed invasion of uh, Ukraine, now we are not talking about uh, will uh, Kiev be captured in three days or when Kharkiv uh, will, will be captured or Odessa. We are talking how to defend Russian territory, and uh, this is uh, this is uh, this is uh, very bad for the Russian military and uh, for the Russian politics. Yes, uh, indeed. We see that Russians are still pressing on Pokrovsk. Their uh, forces were not diverted from the main direction of strike. And do you think that's part of agony? Because Russian oil refineries are burning. They keep burning every night right now because of Ukrainian long-range drone strikes. We had uh, allegedly some Ukrainian missiles striking into Russian oil depots and uh, in temporarily occupied territories. Also, uh, Kursk is on the defense. We have Russian territory uh, like taken by Ukrainian forces and also we have burning oil depots and oil infrastructure. Do you see that the pressing on Pokrovsk is the last territorial gain they are willing to make until uh, recuperating because that oil is very crucial for them? Well, yes, uh, the strike on oil refin uh, refineries in what is also one of the best Ukrainian tactics in the past uh, year. We can see that this is creating a lot of pressure on uh, Russia economically, politi politically, militarily. We can see that uh, fuel sh sh shortages in uh, Russia itself. Uh, this is a problem not for the military, but for the civilian uh, population. And of course, uh, there is a uh, that uh, huge PR, uh, PR impact of, of these uh, strikes. Uh, we have saw that uh, Russia has a demand from the United States to, to make pressure on Ukraine to stop uh, with these uh, attacks, but uh, I don't think that that is uh, going to, to happen. To happen. And uh, when we're talking about uh, Pokrovska, well, Russian military has shown that they uh, I will I will mention again the attack in uh, Kharkiv because uh, the same thing that Ukrainians tried to uh, that the Russians tried to do in Kharkiv, Ukrainians managed to do in Kursk, and this is uh, connected uh, to Pokrovsk uh, in the way that uh, Russian uh, military has, of course, adapted from the start of the war when th they were uh, very very worse uh, that they are now, but. Again, they are not showing some uh, improvement uh, in this uh, in this uh, area in the in the way that they are conducting their warfare. This is uh, still uh, based on their vast reserves of uh, armor and uh, weapons uh, left from the Soviet uh, period, and with uh, use of uh, disposable manpower with uh, meat uh, attacks. And this is all that that they are doing and. Uh, Although some are saying that the Russian reserves are limitless and that uh, Russia can uh, never lose, this is not the thing. We have saw this, this happened many times in history, not only in Afghanistan or in the first Chechen war, but uh, many, 
many centuries back in uh, history and uh, let's uh, and and this is uh, also happening in uh, Pokrovsk they are using the reserves they are throwing the their soldiers in the in the battle they they have so many uh, victims uh, here but they are continuing because uh, Putin have to show some success here he he have to he have to uh, seize some uh, territory and they are going to to continue that in uh, probably in the in the pokrovsk uh, direction but uh, over time we can see that as you said you are right their cap capabilities are shrinking shrinking they are not increasing their reserves are shrinking their manpower is shrinking their weapons are sh shrinking and especially with these attacks on a strategic infrastructure, this is creating a hell of a lot of uh, problems uh, for them. And uh, they, as I, as I said, the, their reserves are, are not limitless. They have uh, limits, and the, those limits are, are closing, closing up. Thank you. Unfortunately, we're seeing that occupying Ukrainian territories are more important to Putin and his regime than defending their own Kursk region. And we hope that their reserves indeed will shrink very fast with those oil plants burning more. Thank you. It was Seat Rizvanovich, owner of YouTube channel War Talk Defense. That concludes our today's video. Thank you for watching. Stay updated, comment, like and subscribe to our UETV English channel for more news from Ukraine. Because it is your support that really matters for us. Goodbye.